Thank you very much. No problem. Have a good day. Well, I've just been to KFC and bought my first ever bargain bucket. A unique experience. An American called Ron Douglas has just published a book in which he blows the cover off the Colonel's 11 secret herbs and spices. He's come up with a mix and we're going to try it against the real thing. These are the two spice mixes we're going to be working with. This is the American suggestion about what the Colonel's 11 famous herbs and spices might be. And this is a sort of slightly British take on it that we worked out. So the American one we're going to be doing is uh, black pepper, salt, sage, dried basil, dried marjoram, dried oregano. This is paprika. This one here is chili powder. This is dried onion flakes. Now, it was supposed to be onion powder, difficult to get in the UK, but these things aren't too tough to find. And I think they'll grind up really nicely. This is garlic powder. And this in the middle is the big controversial ingredient. Two tablespoonfuls of MSG. This is sold as Aji Nomoto, or Japanese super seasoning or flavor powder. Most of the Japanese supermarkets have it now, but you can, and you can find it in other places too. Um, I've got no problem with this. I really think it's, a, it's an excellent ingredient and, and it really does punch up the flavor. So this is our more English inspired spice mix. Uh, this comes from a variety of suggestions from Johnny the Goat, City Cass, West Ham Dan, Simon Pyman, and Toad Juggler. Um, and we've sort of mixed and matched with some, some ideas of our own. So working around here, we've got celery seed. This again is the, the, the dried onion. I mean, I think that's gonna be a really, really interesting ingredient. It should, should help. It's, it's, it feels suitably British, kind of nice. Uh, black pepper, white pepper for the, the sort of aromatic edge to that. Paprika, but we've gone for a bit of smoked paprika. Just the idea of getting a little extra woof of smoke in there would be kind of nice. English mustard powder, yes. Kind of deviling idea. I like a bit of deviling chicken going on. Sage, we're going to have a herb. Nice English sage, good idea. And then we've got salt. And this is sugar. Should give it a little punch. The ingredients are going into a grinder here. Like this. Oh God, this is going to be messy, isn't it? How lovely. So that's our American spice mix. Okay, now we're going to do the uh, English mix. And salt back on. And blitz. So there's the British spice mix. Huzzah! And we need to use those to make a seasoned flour. About that much flour. In goes the gunge. Stir up and pour it out. So most of the recipes we looked at, uh, and in fact most of those recommended by the word of mouth posters, suggested marinating the chicken overnight. Um, I'm not sure if KFC do that. Uh, we haven't been able to find that one out, but we'll give them the benefit of that. So I've marinated all the chicken overnight. Um, and we've done it in milk. So enough to cover and then just cling filmed and in the fridge overnight. We're actually going to poach this in the liquid we marinated in overnight. So here's a reasonable sized pot. In go the chickeny bits. And pour the milk straight over the top. Still no seasoning at this point. I mean, none of the recipes seem to recommend seasoning this early. So that's now ready to go straight onto the stove. And the plan for poaching this is to bring it up to the boil, immediately knock it back to a simmer, simmer for 20 minutes, and then let the chicken stay in the marinade while it cools. And now it's time to flour it. This is going to go into the American mix, and that's going to go into the English mix there. I'm going to flip them over to make sure they're fully coated in a seasoned flour. Again, on the English one here. Now what we're going to do is double dip them. So flour comes off, it goes into some milk for another coating, and then back into the seasoned flour. Again, milk, milk, splash it over a bit, and back into the seasoned flour. Okay. And now, with a bit of a shake, 
these are ready to go into the oil. Oh, what a lovely sound. I don't think there's any real danger of cross-contamination between the two. And then down into the oil. And switch on the timer. And I reckon that's gonna go for about two minutes. We'll see it then. It's been two minutes. Let's haul them out and take a look. That's looking pretty crisply coated. So we'll let that drain for a couple of seconds. One thing the kernel doesn't get a chance to do, and we do, is use paper towel. Lots and lots of it. <laughs> so we can actually dry it right the way off and make sure it stays crisp. So here we go. Here's our two pieces. Pat them a little bit. These are going to be very, very hot. So for comparison purposes, we now have Mr. Douglas's version of the Colonel's recipe, the Colonel's recipe from the bucket, and the word of mouth reader's special English recipe. So here we are, testing time. So let's give it a go. You can see the KFC one, the, the coating is, as somebody memorably described it, possibly Mr. Douglas, very gluey. But let's give it a go. Lovely, nice umami flavor. The chicken's got a slightly foully greasy edge to it, which I'm not liking that much. I'm prepared to believe there's a lot of MSG in that though, because you're getting a big umami hit off it. Also, perhaps because these pieces are cut when frozen, it may be that reason they've got a very good coverage of skin, um, which I think is difficult, more difficult for us to achieve. So on to the next piece. This is the crucial one. This is Mr. Douglas's special. So this is the set of ingredients that he believes replicates the kernels best. As you can see, skin stayed on here. We've got a different kind of adhesion of that crisp outer layer, and our layer is thinner, even though I double dipped it. But, God, it's hot. Oh. My God. Oh, you can't say fairer than that. <laughs> oh. It's, it's like that. It's really quite like Kentucky Fried Chicken, but in an entirely different way. I mean, that's like, um, that's like eating a peach after eating a tin peach. You know, both nice. <laughs> both nice in their own circumstances, but, but that is a, a, an excellent, an excellent mixture. Again, it's really tough to pull out an individual flavour from it. It's, it's rich, bassy, and, and of course, what we've been able to do, that he hasn't, is put really excellent chicken in there. And God, that makes a difference. Final piece. Now this is our recipe. Okay, again, a thin, more friable coat, and it's not stuck so well to the meat. But interesting, much, much lighter flavours. All of those green herbs that were in there are giving it that kind of I don't know, middle layer of flavour, um, and adding, adding, adding bulk to the flavour. This is all kind of high notes. It's, 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 it's peaky, tweaky, but, but very delicious. I'm, I'm going to be forced to conclude that actually fried chicken is a bit like Woody Allen said sex and pizza were. You know, even when it's really bad, it's pretty damn good. But If I wanted to be refined and serve this to nice people, it would be our version. If I wanted a damn good piece of dirty fried chicken, it would definitely be Mr. Douglas's. KFC, I love you. I'll tell you what, there is one thing they do better than, than the rest of us. They, they do give you these little wipes to clean up your fingers. Uh, so until I can get that cracked for these, I think the KFC's got a little edge there, but no. Well done, Mr. Douglas. Mm. I could just eat that for hours.